You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Bachelorette After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Bachelor. <laughs> no goofing off right now because... What is it? Elbow... Elbow, um, elbow, wrist dress. Serious. I can't. Elbow, elbow, wrist dress. <laughs> <laughs> won. A close second to Casey's performance tonight when he won Mr. Mm -hmm. America. Because we all know Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another after show on AfterBuzz TV. I am JC, as Kathy collects herself, and this is the AfterBuzz after show for The Bachelor, Season 9, Episode 4. Where else can you get The Bachelor's version of Mr. America and one of the most touching <laughs> dates? Okay, settle down, you two. I'm gonna have to regulate tonight. One of the most heartfelt dates ever, come on. And okay, guys, I, I'm done. I'm JC, and let's introduce the rest of the panel, starting with the lovely lady to my left. We're both to your left, JC, but I'm Katherine Kelly. And, <laughs> and smart ass number two. <laughs> I'm Chrisley Kennedy, I'm from Rhode Island, and I enjoy long walks on the beach. Really? Aww. And I have a shoe fetish. Is your favorite date May 15th? Because mm -hmm. it's not too hot and not too cold. Perfect for a light sweater. The brunette bandits have attacked, <laughs> and I have no idea what to do right now. But it's a pageant episode! Because Kathy Kelly and I haven't had enough pageants in the past 24 hours. Durr! So. Okay, I, I missed it. I missed it. I'm sorry, because mm -hmm. I was here. But, you know, we got to go. We actually have to introduce Marissa, our other brunette bandit. We've got a... What's up, guys? Triple Miss brunette bandit. <laughs> okay. Kathy, you're an awesome singer. That would be my talent if I were ever in Miss America. Really? Fantastic. Hi, oh, Dios mio. <laughs> Let's get into this. Okay, what did we think of tonight's episode? Is this going to be a quick after show? What? Yes. Chrisley's saying yes. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of action? What no, happened? No. The most exciting part was seeing the boys in the Miss America, Mr. America pageant. That was my favorite, too. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. Because of the Speedos. Not because of the Speedos. <laughs> I'm kidding. Those are ugly. <laughs> you guys should never wear those again. It was the ukulele breaking part that really made it for me. I literally didn't know if I was going to come in tonight because I didn't know if I could sit through the pageant to watch the men in their funny. man bottoms. Glad we didn't invite him last night. No. Okay. He would have liked those girls in Speedos. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of the editorializing, but let's get into it because we got to get out of here. It's super late here at After Buzz. And chat roll if you're watching us live, hello. But remember, also, we've got the website to talk about. The brand new AfterBuzz TV website, which it's got all these great bells and whistles. It's got the archives from all our shows yeah. where you can watch us live. We have a, a live Twitter feed. People have been wondering where to get the chat roll, but it's very, it's all right there. You know, you're watching your video. There's the shows that are coming up, the chat, all of it is at your fingertips, literally. Click Same button. website address, just different look, right? Yes, yeah. AfterBuzzTV.com. We got a facelift. And, like they've, Erica been, Rose. and they've been working up. Ooh, they've been working on it so hard for so long, and it does look really good. So it is. It's great. let us know. Send us your comments, what you think about the shows, and of course of the website. <laughs> Let's get into the show. You two. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm gonna have my hands full with you two. Let's talk about as Chrisley named him last week. Mr. Personality. Brad. Bland. God, you guys. <laughs> One word. I literally, every time I wrote his name this week, I wrote bland. Mm -hmm. What? He, he has a story. I mean, he's a genuine, he's a soft-spoken guy. Maybe the bachelor, Bachelorette wasn't the best forum for him. He has but great skin. He does moisturize. Yeah, he looks good. He's handsome. <laughs> but what happened? No chemistry? What? Okay, Chris, okay. He opened his mouth is what happened, and nothing came out. 
we're gonna get we're gonna get killed in the comments. This no, week. It's, it's honest. No, you're he right. Doesn't have a personality, so we can't get killed for being honest. Maybe he was just shy. Maybe he couldn't get used to then the cameras. Then you probably shouldn't go on a reality television show looking for love. I'm shy. Yeah, 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 you are. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're not even going to My the After Buzz party. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> let us get into the day. Okay, Krista, you had a there was you were a little a little bit angry about the fact that Desiree took Brad up to the lighthouse just to let him go. Why did she take angry. him on a date? I thought at it was all. hysterical. Okay, great point. I even wrote that down. I was surprised on the selection for him as a date. I think that every single season they ha they want to let one guy go on a one-on-one -on -one date just to create drama mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate because you get so so like little time with all of these guys. So why wouldn't you want to bring your front two runners on every single one-on-one -on -one date? Obviously it wouldn't be a very good show, but at least these people would have a better chance of su success in the future, so. In, uh, I think that she probably was questioning yay or nay, and so she just kind of figured this is the only chance I'm gonna get to get him alone and decide if I really wanna keep him or if I really wanna see him I would him disagree home. with that. I think that you know within the first, like, five minutes night who your, your top three are. Everyone said that, like, from Allie to, I don't know, Allie. No. <laughs> Ali, Trista, yes, they've all said that. Yeah, it's the initial attraction, sure. But um, it was like pulling teeth, you know, and, and okay, and then he was crying after the fact. I mean, they... Well, they weren't pulling teeth the whole date. The beginning of the date when they were running around yeah. there being silly, they were having fun. It was when real life happened and they wanted to have a serious conversation about things other than chocolate pretzels. When they had that, a normal date. Right, right. That's when it fell apart and that's when he didn't know how to be himself. And... and there is a part of me that kind of wondered, did he just not know how to be himself because now he's sitting in a room across the table from a girl and there's seven people there watching them every move, every time he lifts his fork. Is that what made it awkward for him or was he just awkward? I thought it was hysterical that she made him climb all the way to the top of the lighthouse just to dump so him. So bad. I mean, If they had more weight on that date, it. I think they would have had a lot more fun. Well, here's something. True. She even said that, you know, it made, he, she made it sound like he was great on paper but she wanted to, what is, what is she looking for? She said, I don't know if that's what I'm looking for. Not him. But what is she looking for? Has she, has she specifically said what? Something with personality. Mm-hmm. God, I give you she guys an out. She wants to have fun. <laughs> she wants to have fun. It's very clear from the, the things that they're doing and he just wasn't it. He was one of the guys that she hasn't made out with yet, right? Yes, one of the mm -hmm. few. Actually, I have the leader, I have the kiss board right that's here. That's pretty obvious who's going home next. Do you want me to read you the, the the leaderboard? I mean, she made out with James six times already. Yeah. James. Yeah, I mean, hmm. she has made out with, Brooks has got three, okay. On camera, this is on camera. This, yes, because there's one that wasn't on camera that I found. Hmm. She had a moment with Zach. Um, naked guy. Naked guy. Last week that Shirtless we did you. not get to see. Okay. It was a beautiful scene when they went, they were all at the pool so party. Beautiful. It was beautiful. Makeouts. He, no, no, not the makeup, but that actually <laughs> what led to the makeup. He uh, actually, Zach K took Desiree on a nice little walk on, you know, the bachelor grounds. And he had a little grapefruit hiding and, and on the grapefruit, he had a little smiley face on it and he wrote something on it and she really fell for it. And it was actually quite a pas passionate kiss. This was something we didn't see. We correct? did not see okay, this. I was just making sure I didn't You're fall like, asleep because <laughs> no, the Brad date was kind of rough. Yeah, no, but we're just, she's made out, I mean, Brooks is three kisses, Ben three. Brighton two, Casey one, Chris three, Juan Pablo one, James six, Brent. I know I had to do the Juan Pablo. Brandon once, Zach once, and then Michael G finally got that kiss tonight. So I feel like the Juan Pablo makeout at the movie definitely counted for more than one kiss. <laughs> I'm just throwing that. I, I think we should count it by seconds. How many seconds have their lips been interlocked? You're making it so much harder for me now. I've got I mean we're just saying. <laughs> Well, let's move on because I know Brad, Brad was the, the quiet part of the date. Let's move on to what you guys were waiting for. And Kathy, Chrisley, take it away. Bye, Rose. Yes, no Rose for Brad. Mm -hmm. Bye, Bland. But I'm going to make you climb to the top of the lighthouse before I tell you you don't get a Rose. It's because they don't get to work out in the house, so he has to get his workout in somewhere. True. Steps. Mm -hmm. 
Ay, Dios mío. Okay, so he, he got no rose. Mm -mm. Group date. Group date. Mr. America. <laughs> Girls, <laughs> go. Because did you know that the Miss America pageant is very near and dear to the Bachelorette's heart? No, how so? It is. I, I have no idea, but when Chris Harrison said that today, I must fell off my chair. Chris Harrison is the host. He's right. The host. Yes. It's not near and dear Plug to the Bachelorette's away. heart. It's his. It's for him, which is great. But it was also really, really fun to watch. And it's on ABC. Of course. Another reason why to put them all together. Mm -hmm. Mr. America. Okay, what'd you get, ladies? Were you okay with them in heels and prepping? And I know Chrisley loved Chris loved and it. heels. Loved it. I thought it showed that these guys really know how to have fun. <coughs> they don't take themselves too seriously. I personally want to be in a relationship with somebody that is a goofball and that has fun and that's wears heels. I thought she was going to say that. <laughs> I, sometimes she does wear heels, so I'm completely on there. Um, but no, they the guys showed great sides today and had so much fun with it, and I really, really enjoyed it. Up until Mikey said that he wasn't a meathead in between bicep curls. That was... So. Oh, did you have a favorite going into the... Who is your... I'm going to ask you ladies the question, and actually everyone watching at home, who was your pick for Mr. America? Mine was Brooks. Yeah, you were yelling at the whole time. He was so fun. Like, he didn't take himself too seriously. His song was really funny. His bathing suit walk was hysterical. Like, the ukulele with Smash was great. I, uh, I wrote a rap. What? Yes! Let's hear the rap. You're going to rap Kelly. right now? It's unfinished, um, but I figured I would rap for you guys. Do you anyways. need a beatbox? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Five. Mr. America's about to start, where the guys compete for Dez's heart. We've got men in heels and men in skates. We're, uh, what light through yonder window breaks? Casey gets the hashtag crown, while other dudes look on and frown. Moving on to later that night, I predict another man fight. Chris is in the hot tub showing Dez affection, but it looks more like he's got a rose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's late at After Best Studios. <laughs> DJ Kathy it's Kelly. It's so late. <laughs> she wrote a rap. She did. I can't, I can't top that. Can't top that? Can't top that. The only thing I can say is, yeah, no, I can't top that. Mm -mm. No rap battle next week, maybe? No. That was a really bad rap, so Not I'm sure rap, you can come right? up with something better. I don't know. All right, so. Do you so have a better ending for it? <laughs> chat roll, YouTube, iTunes, let us know how you'd end Kathy's rap. Definitely. <laughs> All right, get, getting I'm back sorry, to the I'm show. Sorry, we, guys. We rain it in. This is a, only an hour show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that impressed you guys? Quit. Oh my gosh. What? I can't recover. <laughs> Kat, we, uh, Marissa, can you mute, mute Kathy for 30 seconds, please? She's in the penalty box. Okay. Chrisley, anything else? Okay, come on. Casey with the wave. When he won, the surprise look when he won the whole pageant. He nailed it. He nailed and who it. who had the it. Miss Utah moment? So for those Casey of you- didn't do the- No, Brooks did the elbow, no. elbow, wrist, wrist. He had the perfect pageant wave. Um, Miss America's crown was smaller. Mine's bigger. Just want to throw that out there. My, mine's bigger and more sparkly. Um, but- Tiara. Uh, tiara. Yeah, I don't want to lose my sparkle. And there was who had the moment where they asked the question and he just froze and couldn't give an answer wasn't that mikey too because it was perfection because it happened last night at the miss usa, USA pageant w when they were prepping him i believe it was i don't know if it was mikey t i think it was or mikey g and she asked him a question and he just looked at her with this straight face it was michael g actually. it was fantastic yeah that could have been editing it was still great no but it, it was, was a one shot moment. it was a straight shot yeah no, it was a perfect froze. moment yeah, so anything else that stood out, like Zach's song? Were we feeling a little Wes action? The return of Wes, perhaps? If you yes. can't find love, you should find a record deal. From zero to Wes in 2.5. Mm-hmm. Well twice. Said, we saw it twice tonight on mm -hmm. the episode. Twice. You guys are deep throughout all your craziness. Naked guy wants to be a singer. You think so? I think so. You think he's... So is he here for the right reasons? No. I mean, his first opening shot on the television show is him naked on a porch in his house, and then he wears no shirt. He wants and to be Sean. Yeah, he's, when yeah. He grows up. I don't know how I feel about him. What about the fact that we were talking about Meathead Mikey? Sorry, hey, it's all with love. He said it himself. Hey! He hey. called himself a meathead. <laughs> and then his moment was, what his talent was, his Magic Mike Magic moment. Magic Mike routine. He and Brighton. There's mm -hmm. a lot of brighting up on the screen. You're like, whoa. Brighton, for somebody who's so reserved and shy, <laughs> had no problem doing the 
Humpty dance. Yeah. I, I read a little it. spoiler about Bryden, and I'm not too happy with him. You know, the fact that you said that we may have to hit it up a little bit later if we have time on the show. Yeah. Okay, so we'll save for news and gossip. So let's move quickly. Anything happened that the second half of the night with, like, with Ben staking his claim in front of the guys once again? No. But speaking of moving quickly, I think we should talk about a movie. What that movie? Is <laughs> wow, fantastic segue, Kathy Kelly. What are we talking about here? <laughs> we are talking about Cereal Buddies! <laughs> the Adventures of Cereal Buddies. It's our creators. <laughs> it's by our creators, Maria Madunos and Kevin Adegaro from the East Coast as, as well. So we're asking everyone at AfterBuzz, all our fans, you know, we bring you over. You guys cannot calm down. This is important because definitely, this is what we do is free, all our content. And so, you know, by you purchasing Cereal Buddies, it actually helps us. <laughs> and it's a great film. We have, of course, Maria. We have Beth Bears, Artie Lang, we've got Christopher McDonald, and it's also narrated by the Fonz. I mean, it's great. You guys have seen it. <laughs> Kathy's still crying about it. It's so good. It's so <laughs> funny. She can't she can't even take it seriously. It's so funny. So De Winning. Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber. Right. Honestly, so let us actually, you know, also send us comments if you saw the movie, what you thought of it. We'd love to hear stories, and definitely it does help us out. So coming back to Kathy, as she composes herself, because she's still thinking of the Speedos and whatnot. I can't. Every time I look at Marissa, she's laughing. <laughs> it's a good moment here at After Buzz Late Night. The drinks are flowing. We're having a great time. Whatever they put in our cup, I'll have Water. another, please. Okay. Holla. <laughs> so overall, we've had some great... Hold on. If you're watching the video, this is a classic night. Here we go. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Stop making us cry. You're so mean. I'm not mean. I'm practicing for uh, when I win a crown. Oh, I see. Okay. Can we re can we start over? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but seriously. Okay, that was a the fun part of the show. The best moment of the 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 group date. <laughs> sorry, I have marbles in my mouth. Um, was Chris. We saw a different side of Chris when he read her the poem. That was Chris, right? Yes. Okay, just making so sure. You, so you, you like that part with Chris. I did. I think that he's just super authentic and real and very natural, and he's not showy, and he reminds me a lot of Desiree. Hmm. I think they're, they're very similar. They're doing a drinking game in chat roll. Whenever I cry, take a shot. <laughs> it's one of those nights. Let me pinch you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Get I love it. Real drunk. Chat roll, I'll, do, I'll try my best. Okay, so... But let's actually, we've had a lot of fun to this point, but this was probably the next date was one of the most poignant dates that we've ever had on the show. I mean, literally, you have to commend them this season because they've really gone out of their way to kind of change it up a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and this day to the Jersey Shore, to, you know, everything that was, everyone that was affected by the Seaside Heights and Hurricane Sandy. I mean, emotionally, where do you go in a date like that? I mean, was that a difficult position for James to be in? You know, James and Des. I mean, can something come out of that or can magic happen out of that? I don't think it puts either one of them in a bad spot at all. I think that they got to see something that we've all followed on the news. Um, for people who have never been to Jersey Shore, they've only seen it on maybe a television show. Um, and they kind of brought, they were able to bring light to a situation that obviously still needs more help with Red Cross. They obviously, I mean, it's been how many months? It was in November that it happened, and they showed that there's still a roller coaster in the ocean. Um, and then we got to meet these, this amazing couple. You yes. know what I mean? That I don't think that there was any bad side of the date for Des or. Such a beautiful date. I mean, so it was many great. things that happened. I mean, they given up their date for mm -hmm. for for uh, it was Manny and Manny and Jan. Manny I, and Jan. I love this date and giving up the date and stuff. I just feel like it was very manufactured, and I wish like it didn't seem spur of the moment. Like they made it seem like it was on television. Clearly, they had planned for mm -hmm. Manny and Jan to go on this date. And the restoration of their album and yeah. You know, so you thought it was a little bit of. I just production. wish that they had been upfront about it and, okay. you know, said, like, you know, we should plan this date for them. Um, wouldn't it be so nice? As opposed to, well, we should give up the, this date and go get fast food, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm yeah. okay. I liked it. I didn't feel like it felt contrived at all. I thought it felt pretty natural. And I liked that um, they showed them sitting at a bar 
with people in the background. It just felt like they walked into a bar and said, can I film here? Which they have done because yeah. we did it on my season. Um, so it was really cool that they did that. And just I cried from the time that they got up in the helicopter and showed um, the Jersey Shore because I yeah. went there summers with my family and till they got to dance with Hootie. I did. Movie. I cried from from the. It was just. It was so touching. It was so emotional, and it was so nice to see that on this show. You know, and and like you said, bringing up what you just said, Chrisley, is do they need more real dates like that on the show? I mean, do you think like James and Des had those moments to really just be together and not worry about being whisked off on top of a mountain where they can just sit and hang out at a bar? really just get to know each other do i think they need them yes do i think we'll see them no it doesn't make for great tv it doesn't make for all the stuff that a lot of people like i mean as much as i love the real dates when we get to see them just kind of sit back and relax i also love the shutting down a bridge in the middle of los angeles with chandeliers hanging and driving up in a bentley and having dinner and music playing like who wouldn't want that to happen you know what i mean so i love the authenticity of the date that they had tonight but at the same time I just feel like it's not what the show's about they a lot of people I saw on Twitter were saying that they were doing this date because of budget cuts which I don't agree with whatsoever no not at all Um, I think that all of their dates are pretty much sponsored from the helicopters to the getaways and to say that it was budget cut is really misinformed no, it's very clear that they went to New Jersey because that's where Miss America is being held and Chris Harrison is going to host it. And while they were in New Jersey, they said, wouldn't it be a great opportunity for us to go show the Jersey Shore? Yeah. They, they, Bachelorette and Bachelor work very closely with the Red Cross. We raise money with them year round. We do benefits with them. Mm-hmm. So I think that it all just tied in and it had nothing to do with budget cuts whatsoever. I mean, they're going to Germany. So yeah. I don't really think that money's an option. True, 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 true. The problem. So, uh, so in the end, who had, I mean, uh, to a point, I was more interested in seeing Manny and Jan's date. <coughs> totally. I was. Totally. It was so yeah. cute. It was just real. And they'd been married for, what, 38 or 39 yeah. years? Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, they've lost everything, and they're still so happy and so pleasant. And to see them so with So grateful for what they have. It was – and it's that – it's, you know, and I'm sure – because I'm from the East Coast, I'm going to relate it to East Coast, and I'm sure everyone knows it, but it's that old school East Coast Italian mentality that they do for everyone else and never for themselves, and they would have never done anything like that in a million years because they work, 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 work. That's what they do. They work, they come home, they make dinner, that's it. And it that mentality is so not conducive to what they had tonight. So it was just, it felt like I was watching like my aunts or uncles or grandparents being able to do something. So it was really, really touching. And I also think that there was the weird moment with Chris where he started talking about how he cheated on his girlfriend that I thought was going to really break him tonight. James, sorry, sorry. Chris. Wow. (laughs) It happened. I'm tired. It's been a long day. (laughs) Now, yo, so what did you think? I I mean, at first, it's were you the one saying that he's not going to get a rose? Yeah, I thought he sent his self home. Especially since it had happened to Des as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a firm believer in once a cheater, always a cheater just takes a little liquor to get a former rehabilitated cheater to be a cheater again? I don't think so. I think it depends on when, how I, old you are. Like, he was real young. It was freshman first year, year in college. college. I, I think that there are people that think about cheating and there are people that never, it would never even cross their mind. Marissa, what do you think? Uh, no. No? No. No, which that's way? It? Cheater? No, that's wrong. I, yeah. I agree. I think it's the most but selfish you don't think thing they that can you ever could ever change? do. I think that someone can cheat and realize that they did something wrong and never do Maybe it again. when you're like 12, but like once you're once you hit a certain age, like once you're in college or once you've passed high school, I just feel like I, I feel like you're old enough to know that that's a wrong thing to do. It's just it's it's selfish. Like I just I don't know. So then you did I, it, I think that a guy, especially if they have cheated before, they have it in their mentality where, oh yeah, I shouldn't cheat because I know it's wrong, but they still might want to. And that's wrong. So it's when there thought. are people who would never even think of it. Hmm. So Interesting. So you you don't agree with Desiree giving James the, the rose? I, I don't think that she should not give him the rose. I just don't think that she should pick him because I feel like he might cheat again. I'm very adamant about cheating. I don't like it. 
Okay. Now, so. and Chrissy, you're okay with him getting the rose? I am. I think that he was a freshman in college. I think that yeah. we all do stupid things and make mistakes, and I feel like you can make a mistake like that and see how much it hurts someone else and realize you may have lost something and never do that again. I, I mean, I just don't think that just because you cheated once, you're always going to be a cheater. I, I you like cheat that three or four it. times, then you're a cheater. You know what I mean? But I, I don't. I think that people grow up and they see feelings and they become substantial, and that you can change. I, I like the fact that he said he came out and was honest about it, um, but I think that it ruined his chances with Des. So. And given her body language, because she was oh, she kind completely of, changed. Yeah, she, she got very aggressive in the way that she spoke to him, even. Mm-hmm. So maybe, yeah, so you're saying maybe not much longer for James. Mm -mm. And especially from the previews that we saw. It seems like he's gunning for Bachelor. Yeah, so there's a lot to be said with James. They can't make a meatball the Bachelor. He doesn't look like a Bachelor. And if they're gonna, it's gonna be Pauly D. Paul's Sorry, Paul I'm, just throwing, I'm just saying. If they're gonna make a meatball the Bachelor, it's not gonna be. Okay, so what about maybe, well, let's, uh, moving on from the date, let's move on to cocktail hour and move on to possibly, what about Brighton? possibly being a bachelor because it seems like he's not really feeling Des. I was really confused by that whole happening. Like, I, I don't even understand. Like, I feel like, I don't know if he was just saying that to the guys or if he was just feeling insecure so he didn't know what to do. I don't think that he didn't really want to be there for Des. I think that he was questioning if Des likes these other, these other guys, I'm nothing like them, she must not like me. So he was going to want to send himself home before she could send him home. I think it was all just a big insecurity. See, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Either it's not that she, he's not feeling it, he just needs reassurance. That's yeah, it. he's just That's insecure. all he needed. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, and that happens. A lot of contestants go through that oh, yeah. every season. So, Well, you see people in the house that you know you're nothing like and you don't ever want to be like, and you're like, wait, if they see something in them, then what the hell am I doing here? And you have that moment, and I think that's what we saw. And what I found, the only thing that stu stood out for me in the cocktail night was Chris. When Des and Chris, really like she opened up to Chris. Mm -hmm. She was talk She was telling Chris her life story. Usually, it's the guys like telling him their yeah. story to Des. It's the other way around. Because so. he's just normal. He's, you know, it's funny. I feel like at one point one of us talked about the fact that Desiree is. I don't want to say use the word boring, but she's not so on like the rest of some of our bachelorettes have been. And I think that when we look at Emily and we look at Ali and we look at some of these girls, other than Ashley, because I think Ashley is just super bubbly, you look at Emily and Ali and you see what they're doing now and their personalities. Mm -hmm. They're not people that go back to their normal lives and live in Alabama in a house with their family. They are personalities, and they are very on, and they know how to be on. And I think that Desiree is just the girl next door. She doesn't know how to be on and do that, like, hi. I'm, you know, I just don't think she has that in her. And I think that because we're used to that now, she seems a little bit almost deflated when she talks and not as passionate. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's because she's just very authentic. Hmm. I hope she doesn't lose that. Anything stand out to you guys before we move on to Rose Ceremony, Rose ceremony now Marble Mouth? Uh. <laughs> No. no. No one still likes Ben, but yeah, it's, I, it's so funny. So tonight I met a girl who loves The Bachelorette, and she is from London, and she had me laughing hysterically because she was saying that she really only moved to the States because she had to watch this franchise because Someone they don't have it there. make you laugh. It was, I know, it's terrible. It's terrible. But it was so funny because she was talking about the show and the breakdown and saying how gossipy the guys were. And she was like, what I don't understand is there's all these guys that see one guy or another guy that are a little bit more aggressive than they are or they go for that four seconds of extra time outside of the house when nobody else is watching and all of a sudden that makes them have bad character. Yeah. And it was great to hear somebody else say that because I'm constantly sticking up for Ben, who I don't even like, because I don't think it makes him have bad character. I just think that he's aggressive. It's the way you do it. it uh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I just, it was, it was fun to hear somebody else kind of an outsider, because I only talk to you guys about it now. Yeah. So it was fun to hear somebody else. Just the way you do it. Say that you the can do anything as gossipy. long as you do it the right way. Okay. All right. Well, no, so let's. Let's get, get to the rose ceremony. I, I, I just really want to get the news and gossip because I know you've got great stuff. So yes. let's, any surprises on who got booted off? Well, first Brad and then- Who? Th Brad. Brad, he was the gentleman on the first date. Bland. He, okay. 
<laughs> there's no winning. Mr. Win Personality. There's no winning you two over tonight. Okay. okay, and the second guy, which you guys said, who's that guy? That's actually who I was saying who to, not Zach. <laughs> the children's book writer. I was going to give you a elbow, elbow, wink, wink, but you know. Yes, from Newport Beach, California. Yes. So any thoughts of them leaving? They're like, no. I don't even remember him being there. I, I forgot that he was there. I, I did. I thought originally, I actually, when I did my, uh, like, fantasy bachelor with my friends um i picked him as like one of the the front runners brad uh oh, was, i'm sorry <laughs> no uh, zach, zach. <laughs> you have other friends yes i'm very popular so <laughs> dead silence you know you know the you know what radio silence that's not very good there kathy <laughs> just saying all right. I was creating suspense for oh. zach i think that i thought that he was like a really cool dude good lord you guys are terrible tonight. No. I, lo I love We're it. We're having fun. I know. So, okay. So, no surprises. Chat roll loves us. Chat roll loves you. So, let's get out of this episode. Final thoughts? None. I'm let's move on to news week. and gossip. News and gossip. <laughs> I got a few too. News part. by Kathy Kelly. Ooh, I want that every time. <laughs> it's kind of breathy. Okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so, now that I've had that intro. Bachelor Nation celebrated Father's Day this past Sunday. <laughs> and from tweets to cute Instagrams, dads everywhere were celebrated. But my favorite was Erica Rose's. She said, she tweeted, just got done having the best sushi with my dad, Dr. Franklin Rose. Now it's time for some lip injections. <laughs> but I'm punch. My chair is bigger than hers, too. What? My tiara is bigger than hers, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was a great Father's Day. Next, piece of news and gossip. So I don't get more radio silence in here. Katie Couric had a Bachelor special today. What? Yes. No. And they talked about everything that they always talk about. Spoilers? No. No spoilers. But the one thing that I did take away from it was Chris Harrison wants to steal Katie's job. And that, or er, no, not Trista, Molly Mesnick said, um, well, there was this awkward moment between Katie and um, the Mesnicks, and oh, oh, we're watching the pageant right now. Marissa was distracted <laughs> by the abs. <laughs> yes, so um, Molly Mesnick basically, well, first Katie said, she's like, oh, so were there any hard feelings uh, when he dumped you on national television, which was a really awkward moment, um, and then Molly said, well, yeah, and they laughed about it. And Molly was like, but it was weird because I was getting ready to be the next Bachelorette, which is something that I had never heard before. She was actually picked to be the Bachelorette over Jillian Harris, and then Jason confesses his love, so she turns down that opportunity to see if it will work with Jason. Ah, That's real love right there, folks. I mean, clearly, they're married and pregnant. Now they have, no, she has a baby. Yep. Riley. Aww. And they said that if she ever got the opportunity to be on The Bachelorette, that they would let her because it is an opportunity that no one should miss out on. Okay. Wow. How much were they paid to say that? I don't know. <laughs> um, Trista also said that Bachelor Nation is a dysfunctional family, mm -hmm. which is something that is not news. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Ashley Spivey tweeted tonight, a fun fact, Juan Pablo and Casey B used to date. Hashtag secret. Hashtag bachelorette. Weird. Whoa. That is breaking news. That's so exclusive. Yes. Wow. Well, not an exclusive. Oh, yeah. Every she one of her followers it. found out. Um, so I don't know what the history is there, uh, whether they dated for a long time, went on one date. Uh, there seems to be a lot of incest within the bachelor family. Yes. Maybe why yes, they are dysfunctional. Yes. Um, and uh, what's her name? Last week, uh, Playboy. Playmate Stephanie. Stephanie Lattimore, yeah. Uh, <laughs> who came on says that she regrets confronting Brian on TV. I wonder why, because she looks like a train wreck. I heard that they're 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 back together. I heard that too. I don't know if it's true, but she also said that she has the hots for one of the guys this season who is not Brian. She's a train wreck. That yes. is wow. I really wreck. hope that they are not together for anyone's sake. Yeah. Um Anything and any? last piece of news and gossip, um, Ali 
Fedotowski tweeted that she is going to be on the big screen. She's excited to announce that she has a cameo in Woody Allen's latest film, Blue Jasmine, out on June 11th. So unbelievably grateful to be a small part of it. Wow. What does a cameo mean? Like a line? Um, just that you're in it. Like, it could be featured extra. It could be yeah. a couple lines. It could. It's just like, you know, She, like, walks in the room. Role. Here is a burrito for you, sir. Thank you, and walks mm, out. Okay. In and out. Just wondering. I've got one, actually. I've got a little piece from a uh, little news and gossip from... I mean, we should probably talk about the burrito. Okay, sure. But, yeah. Yeah, no, let's, let's hit the... It's a quick... It was an interview, two-minute interview with... Uh, Mike Fleiss in Entertainment Weekly talking about the possible return of Bachelor Pad. Oh, yeah. I yes. Yeah. It, it, it's going to come back next season. He, he, he said next possibly, summer, potentially. Possibly. But he also said something that I found even more important, and he said that about Desiree. That he loved me? That, they, they cut it out. They <sighs> cut that part out. I'm sorry. I, I did that. hear it. I did hear it, though, just so you know. But no, yeah. actually, that Des's finale, it's, gonna, it's the weirdest ending we've ever had that's for sure. <gasps> and whether or not Desiree or the guys are happy with it, we'll see. The weirdest ending he ever. He said it's, it's never happened like this on the show before. So he said expect the unexpected. Oh my gosh, I hope she gets on one knee. So I'm leaving it at that. Just It was a quick blurb. You can find it at Entertainment Weekly. So He said it's never happened before? It's the weirdest ending ever. So the last piece of news, a little bit spoilery. Yeah, so if you guys don't want to so. hear spoilers, like check out... Yeah. Spoiler alert. Check out for the seconds. week. We'll see you next week. 30 but, seconds. Okay. Um, Bryden has a girlfriend back home. Um, I don't remember where I read this. I think it was either wet paint or um, someone tweeted it to me. But he has a girlfriend. Um, basically, she Instagrammed photos hours before he left for The Bachelor for California of them kissing and saying, baby, can't wait to see you. So it sounds kind of like she knew that he was going on The Bachelor. Go ahead, honey. Have fun. And uh, yeah, so Bryden, America's sweetheart guy, not so much. Wow, that is quite an ending for news and gossip. You know dun, what? Dun, dun. I don't even know if we want predictions. And I don't even know if that'll be brought up on the show because they've already <laughs> had one girlfriend yeah, this no. season. Well, Can't who knows with the, with the previews? Well, let's, let's move into predictions then. Yes. So next week, we're in a bunch of Lederhosen, and we're Castles. Off. Castles. Castles in Germany. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ich sprechen nur ein bisschen Deutsch. Wow. Chat roll, let me know what she said. All right, now, what's going to happen next week? Because we hear James trying to be the next Bachelor. Is Bryden going to tell her what you just said? What? <laughs> no. You never know. Come on. I'm just saying. Oh, I thought you meant the thing in German. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Any predictions? <laughs> Anything? Someone's gonna go home. <gasps> yeah. Someone's gonna cry. Okay. Someone's gonna get a rose. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. Somebody pisses off Des because she looks a little emotional in the. Uh, she cries. Mm-hmm. She cries. Maybe she was just having a laughing attack. I'd rather see her cry than these boys. I'm sick of the boys crying. All right. So maybe we'll have to wait for next week to find out if there's any more man crying. No more. Bright and secret. No more. And whether we can get a little more oomph in this season because. I. I think that there's going to be some guys in later hosen. Okay. Some with with that said, beer. Kathy, boot. where can they find you? <laughs> you can find in me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly. You can find me here at After Buzz. I do a million shows, including chatting with Kathy. If you like boy bands, got a show for you. Ooh. And Chrisley, what about yourself? <laughs> you guys can find me at Chrisley on Twitter and Instagram. And Marissa, thank you for putting up with us again tonight. Where can we find you? At uh, Serafini TV on Twitter. And you can find me at JC Rubio TV on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can find all of us at AfterBuzz TV. We'll see you next week. Good night. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.